sea foam is quite a, an interesting natural technical product because it sea foam you know exists we could look at paintings can't we of you know venus rising from the foam it, it's an ancient um uh motif um but it has entered into a historical bond with climate change um and is now sort of generates more and more of itself or becomes uncontrollable in a certain way um apparently sea foam has a similar chemistry to soap bubbles in that it um this planktonic algae decomposes and its fats and proteins act as these surfactants or surface active agents um, with hydrophobic um, ends to their molecules and so they move to the air and then the amphi uh, and then the hydrophilic molecule part moves to the water and this forms bubbles trapping sort of layers of water between the molecules of surfactants and then they stretch into spheres and this whole sea foam sort of um, kicks kicks off. And his volume on foams looks at islands and greenhouses, space stations, submarines, shopping centers, air conditioned offices. These are all spaces that he considers insular. They're atmospherically complete within themselves. Um, and, and he thinks about the, the ways in which they sort of sit alongside each other. And this is where the foam metaphor becomes important because foam is like an aggregation of lots of bubbles together. Um, I've got a quote here from Foams. This is where he's conceptualizing society as a kind of foam. Society is an aggregate of microspheres, couples, households, businesses, associations of different formats that, like the individual bubbles in a mountain of foam, border on one another and are layered over and under one another yet without truly being accessible or effectively separable from one another. There's a powerful sort of image of, of proximity touching, you know, each bubble's outer membrane touches on another or you share the membrane, but there is a separation between, so you're proximate but separate at the same time. And this is Sloterdijk's vision of our social world. So it's very much a vision of humans without any sort of solidarity, without the capacity really to exchange anything meaningful between them. And yet they are all aware of each other. Um, for him then it's, it's the city, the apartment block. He also returns to the skyscraper as a kind of foam form. Um, there's a quote from Roland Barthes that I think helps us to, to get into this on the basis of, of the kind of chemical form of, um, he's talking about an emulsion or a sort of colloid. They're all sort of on the same kind of plane. So I think this is quite an exemplary thing to look at. But in the responsibility of forms is discussing the oil paintings of Bernard Riquichot, a painter who died quite young. You can see some instances of the work online. Bart's talking about the way in which oil in the paint sort of acts within the paintings, but then he starts to become all culinary and extends it into mayonnaise. So oil is that substance which augments the food stuff without fragmenting it, which thickens without hardening it. Magically, with the help of a thread of oil, the egg yolk assumes a growing volume. And this, and this, to infinity. 
It is in the same way that the organ grows by intersusception. We'll come back to that. Now, oil is that same substance which serves for food and for painting. To abandon oil for a painter is to sacrifice painting itself. The culinary gesture which mythically establishes and sustains it. So Bart is thinking about oil and mayonnaise, the production of an emulsion or colloid, this sort of foamy substance, a thickening and a growing without any hardening, an infinite expansion in which one material is dispersed through another. And he mentions this phrase, this word intersusception, which mainly if you look it up, you get the medical definition and it's something like a what is this like a blocked internal organ that sort of folds in on itself that in a more general sense it means an infolding or coiling of the self into the self or one material into another in an entanglement that cannot be untangled or cannot easily be untangled so we have the definition here into susception, reception of one part within another, a taking in, intus within, um, susception, and a taking up, a taking in hand, an undertaking. Um, so this sort of Bart has brought us to a point. He's making, you know, quite a, a strange kind of move between the oil of oil painting and an oil in mayonnaise and, and, and the forms that are produced colloidally and through um, emulsion uh, and through this emulsion and the folding of one part into another. So this allows us just to think for a moment about foams as a colloidal dispersion. <laughs>